day, evening. It was evening time for most people. The wee hours of the morning, midnight. So uh, today is Saturday, February 19th, 2022. And it is 12.51 a.m. midnight, technically. So um, yeah, I pray that everybody is doing amazing. So I just got out of a, an amazing Bible study. Um, and the Bible study was on a book in the Bible I've been trying to do for a long time. I've just never done it uh, before, but I've been studying it for like a year. And uh, when I first encountered this passage in the Bible, it touched my spirit so much that I just had to study it, you know? And you're probably wondering what's up with the 92 behind me, the 92. I was born in 1992 and I am 29 years old. So I had to hit you guys with the 92. Man, I'm blessed to be alive another year, 29 years. I wish I was younger, but it's whatever. <laughs> so anyways, let's get to it, man. So the Bible passage, first of all, the title of today's lesson is go to the hyrax. You know how in the Bible it says go to the ant? Go to the hyrax. Go to the conies. Go to the rock badgers. These are all the same things, right? It's the same animal. So go to them. So we're gonna go to them real quick and we're gonna learn all the mysteries, all the revelations, just all receive all the knowledge, receive all the glory, and receive all the blessings that God wants us to learn from this creature and how it's applicable, applicable, yeah, that's the word to us, right? Because everything in the Bible is applicable to us, all right? So, guys, here we go. It's Proverbs 30, verse 24 through 28. So turn to Proverbs 30, verse 24 to 38. All right, so I'm about to share my screen. Um, I'm on multiple platforms, as you guys know. My YouTube channel is uh, Upload Past Crossroads. My podcast is Upload Past Crossroads. My Facebook page is Sean Christopher Jenkins. My LinkedIn page is Sean Christopher Jenkins. I'm live right now on all those social media pages. So if you want to see me share my screen, go to those pages. I'm also live on my Trouble Don't Last Twitter page, Snap, Instagram, and TikTok. You can see my screen on my Twitter page, Trouble Don't Last. You can also see my... Uh, yeah, that's all the places you can see my screen. But anyways, I also have another Instagram page, my underscore daily underscore Bible. So thanks for tuning in, my underscore daily underscore Bible. Trouble don't last, that's a great page. Thanks for tuning in. And then I have a Tumblr page, Trouble don't last, number one. All right, so let's get to it, guys. Let's get to it, man. This passage in the Bible is Proverbs 30, verse 24 through 28. You guys ready for this? When I first read this, it was crazy, all right? So Proverbs 30, verse 24 to 28 says, There be four things which are little upon the earth, but they are exceedingly wise. The ants are a people not strong, yet they prepare their meat in the summer. The conies are but feeble folk, are but feeble folk, yet they make their houses in the rocks. This is the verse we're focusing on, verse 26. Let's finish it out because this is all a section. The locusts have no king, yet they go forth, all of them in bands. The spider taketh hold with her hands and is in king's palaces, all right? So today we're focusing on verse 24. There be four things which are little upon the earth, yet they are exceedingly, exceedingly wise. Four things, little on the earth, exceedingly wise, right? The conies are but a feeble folk, verse 26, yet they make their houses in the rocks. We're about to tear this up. See, guys, a lot of times we miss out on the details of life. We miss out on the little things of life, the minuscule things of life. We miss out on what God is doing, hearing a word from God, hearing a message from God, just because we're not paying attention to every single detail of our life. I just talked about this on our Bible study tonight. I, I, well, on Friday today. <laughs> so I talked about how when you're going to the airport and you randomly encounter people at the airport, you encountered them for a reason. They encountered you for a reason. They may remember you. You only encounter them one, one time. You only enc will encounter them one time. There's people you only encounter one time in your life. And it's just in passing sometimes. You just see them. You probably just give them a head nod. You probably were awful to them. But every detail in life is important. It's significant, especially for a child of God. So for a child of God, you don't miss out on a little bitty things that's occurring in your life because everything has a reason. Everything has a purpose. Even little small things like the ant, small things like the locust, small things like the spider, small things like the conies. Bet you don't even know what a cony is, but I'm about to teach you what it is. All right, so guys, are you paying attention to the details in your life? Are you paying attention to 
the things you think have no meaning, have no significance, have no purpose, because they all do. God does does nothing for nothing. All right, that's a quote from me. You got you hear that? God does nothing for nothing. He does everything for a reason. Everything has significance. Everything has meaning. Everything is for your edification, for your benefit, for your growth, for your maturity. You name it. So, man, we're about to tear this up, man. Psalms verse one. Uh, Psalms 104 verse 24 says, how many are your works, Lord? In wisdom, you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Man, did you know, guys, when it came, when it comes to the earth, you can experience God with everything. Did you know that, guys? I love how you can experience God through the little things of life. You know, you can experience him do the little things that you think seem insignificant, seem stupid, seem pointless, seem ordinary, seem small, and seem little. In everyday life, in every moment of everyday life, you can experience God. Did you guys know that? The earth is full of his creatures. His wisdom, in wisdom, you made all of them. God made every creature in wisdom. And he's trying to teach us everything through all his creations, guys. All his works. Is accomplishing wonders. It's accomplishing his mission, his mission, and it's also leading us to him. So, man, guys, here go some quotes. Big things come in small packages. This is what we're learning from Proverbs 30, verse 24 through 28. I haven't even talked about the conies and the ants and the locusts and spiders yet. But guys, small things come in big pack packages. That means God can do anything with anything. He can use anything and he can speak through anything. Right, guys? So, man, here goes some, another quote. God can do anything with the little. A little can go a long way with God. So a little wisdom, a little faith, a little money. God can do a lot with a little. Look what he did with the five rocks that David had. He only had to use one against Goliath. A little rock killed a 10-foot giant. Wow. <laughs> a little thing, guys. A little thing. Shift, shift from a pool. We talked about that on my YouTube channel with Exodus chapter 1. Two midwives, two people who had no significance, no meaning, who were the scum of the earth in the Egyptian culture. Two midwives were used by God to save babies, the Israelites from being extinct. Two midwives, two nobodies. We don't, y'all don't probably don't even know who Shifra and Pua is, but God used them mightily to save Moses from death and other children from Israel because they didn't want to follow Pharaoh's uh, order of slaughtering all the babies, all the Israelite babies. Man. The little things in life, guys, has significance and has meaning. Success in life is founded upon attention to the small things rather than the large things. And one thing I always quote on my YouTube channel is this. Champions are champions not because they do anything extraordinary, but because they do ordinary things better than every, better than anyone else, right? So Chuck Noll said that championship coach for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Let's keep on going. Did you know that God can speak through creation? He speaks through creation in many ways, guys. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the works of his hands. That's Psalm 19, verse 1. Uh, Romans 1, 20. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from his workmanship, so that men are without excuse. You're without excuse. You can see God's work through his invisible qualities through everything you see right now. So guys, do you have faith that you can see God with everything occurring in life right now? Do you have faith in that? Because if you don't, you're not going to see it. You got to believe. You got to have faith. You got to be able to see the unseen. God is speaking through what you see. And there's also things that are unseen that can be seen with what you see. You got to see what I'm saying, where I'm going at. So, man, that's Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for and the assurance of what we do not see. You see his works all the time, right? But can you hear what he's trying to say to you through his works? Mm -mm -mm. Through the shark, through the lion, through the bear, through anything, guys. Stop signs, stop lights, you name it. Can you see God at work? And what he's doing, what he's trying to say to you. Did you want a word today? Did you need some motivation today? You need some inspiration? I got you. Just wait a minute, man. So, guys, man, there's there is much we can learn from God's creation. God is in everything. His glory can be seen any and everywhere. He is speaking with you at all times. He has a message for you through all things, even the things you cannot see. So, do you have faith? Is your faith big enough to see it? All right. So, yeah, guys, you I need you guys to open your ears. 
to open your eyes so you can hear. This is what God has always said after every every single parable he ever told, every story he always said, do you have ears to hear? You know, then hear it. You know, like pay attention, guys. So, you know, God created it all. He created everything, right? He's around. He's he's in everything. He's in all creation, right? And he has a word waiting for you, speaking with us and waiting for us to experience him. All right? So, yeah, everything represents and is pointing us towards him, right? So, guys, let's get to it, man. Let's get to it, man. So, like, like I was trying to say, man, from the most simplest things in all creation, you can experience God and receive his guidance, revelation, insight, inspiration, motivation, counsel, wisdom, you name it. Everything you need and desire right now in this in your life right now, you can receive from the conies, from the, rec, the rock badgers that we're going to talk about, through sports even, through exercising, through track. Like, the things that you think have no meaning has a lot of meaning to God. He's speaking to us through everything. So pay attention, all right, guys? So... Another title of the lesson I was going to say was Little Creatures with a Big Message. So, guys, we're focusing on the conies. I'm going to read it again, man. We're in Proverbs chapter 30, verse 24 to 28. And it says, there be four things which are little upon the earth, but they are exceedingly wise. Right? Verse 26, the conies are but a feeble folk, yet they make their houses in the rock. So we're focusing on conies. Right? All right, so we already talked about the four things which are little upon the earth. These things are little. Like, you think, nobody thinks about a coney. Do you even know what a coney is, a rock badger? Uh, So that's another thing. What is a coney? All right, so here goes. I'm sharing my screen on my YouTube channel, Upload Past Crossroads, on my Facebook page, uh, Sean Christopher Jenkins. So befriend me on those and like and watch all my videos on YouTube if you like where I'm, you know, videos like this, man. We're about to tear it up, man. So, uh, and on my Twitter page, Trouble Don't Last, I'm trying to think where else. It's Sean Christopher Jenkins, my uh, LinkedIn page. Yeah, you can see my screen on those. But this is the cute little Coney. Coney looks so cute, man. Look at look how cute this thing is. This is a Coney. So other names for Coney's are Rock Badgers, Cephanim, Hyraxes, Rock Rabbits. These are other names for Coney's, right? Coney's are creatures of little power. So the Latin and Septuagint versions of the Bible calls them mount, mountain mount, mouses and uh, hedgehogs. And they look like guinea pigs, a fat guinea pig, a rabbit, and they look like rats. So everybody always compares them to those animals. But this is what it looks like, right? So we see hyraxes, you know, they have weak teeth. This is, there goes some facts about them. Hyraxes have weak teeth. They have small ears. They have nails instead of claws, right? I mean, that's crazy. No tail, little feet, short legs, feeble legs, can't run, right? Because their legs are so short. They're plant eaters, like it says in the book of Leviticus. See, conies, rock badgers, sephanin, they're all mentioned in the Bible multiple times, right? So it's not just this passage. But anyways, they can't outrun, cannot fight back, no weapon, they have no weaponry in their biological makeup, right? They're weak and feeble. This is the key word. They're weak and feeble and they have no method of attacking other animals. So they're not a predator, they're defenseless, and they're without means of self-defense. They're vulnerable to all attacks from all predators, only prey to other animals, can really do nothing like other animals, right? So hyraxes, they know their strength and they know their weaknesses. So we're about to tear this up, guys. This relates to the Christian life. You probably don't see it now, and that's great, but it's the little details in life, right? So we're gonna talk about some facts about the conies real quick, but let me keep on going, man. So first thing you know, you need to know about the hyraxes is they know their strength and they know their weaknesses. They know what they are good at, and they focus on doing this, right? So they're humble people. Do you realize your weaknesses? Do you realize where your security lies? This is one of the many applications when it comes to a rock badger, guys. Many, right? So here goes some scripture verses, man. Proverbs 29, 23, a man's pride will bring him low, but a humble spirit will obtain honor. We, we're going to see how these little conies who are humble people, humble folk, feeble folk, Mm -mm -mm. It's crazy how the Bible called these conies folk, right, and they're animals. But anyways, we're going to see how God honors these animals, even though they're weak and feeble. Man, doesn't that sound like us? So James 4, verse 10, humble yourselves in the presence of the Lord, and he will exalt you. Matthew 23, 12, whoever exalts himself shall be humbled, and whoever humbles himself shall be exalted. Lastly, Proverbs 22, 4, 
The reward of humility and the fear of the Lord are riches, honor, and life. So because the conies rely on the rock, I'm just going to spoil it a little bit. Because the conies rely on the rock, <laughs> they live in richness, honor, and life. All right, we're about to tear this up, guys. So here goes my quote to you guys. You, don't, you only go as far as you are humble with God. You only go as far as you, as you are humble with God. You want to go far in life, humble yourself. This is so many scripture verses. Proverbs 16, when Jesus was saying anything that Jesus said, when he said, come unto me or something, the first thing he says is humble yourself. In 2 Chronicles 7, 14, first thing he says is humble yourself. So in order to come to God and to know God, you got to be humble. You don't know everything. You can't do everything. You need to know your weaknesses just like the Coney, right? I'm going to talk about that later, but let's talk about some facts with the Hyraxes, man. So here goes some facts, man. So the Hyrax, man, it's... Uh, uh, there are um, pachyderms. That's what they are. They are pachyderms. So that's the first thing I want to say. So pacha means thick and derma means skin. So it means that they're thick skin, right? So this is crazy, right? So though they're smaller and they're, they're in closer relation to the rhinoceros, so that dinosaur, and to elephants because of their thickness of skin. That is so crazy, right? Because they're weak and feeble. They can't run or do anything, yet they're compared to elephants and rhinoceroses. That just shows how powerful they are. Like, they're weak and feeble, but yet they're thick-skinned. See, life's hard for this, this Hyrax, this Coney, this Rock Badger. Like, it's not the, it's not the biggest and the baddest animal that there is in the animal kingdom. Like, their bi biological makeup sucks. For living in the world, guys. Like, life isn't fair for them. Like, you know, it would be cool for them to be like in the animal kingdom and they're towering over all the rest of the animals. It'd be cool if they were stronger than, bigger than, faster than, better than, or even cooler than the other animals, but they're not. They're probably like the lamest animals. And you know, some people in life, like our circumstances are just like the conies. Like, <laughs> man, like the conies, man, life isn't fair for them. And like sometimes life isn't fair for us, right? Sometimes life is hard. It isn't going the way we panned it out and want it to go. Like sometimes, you know, good people don't always win. Actually, wicked people, evil people, awful people sometimes get the best of us. And they even take advantage of the good people, right? And get away with it too. But you know, hyraxes, rock badgers, conies, the, this animal. They do well in difficult situations and conditions, guys. So, yeah, they're afraid of the foxes and the birds and the dogs and hunters, and they're aware of their surroundings. That's one quote that you need to you need to remember. Like that's one fact about the hierarchy you need to remember. They're aware of their surroundings. So, yeah, man, they are they are not made to have their way against other animals and stuff like that. But they know their their strength and their weaknesses. And I'm gonna talk about that later. So I'm not even gonna do that right now. But yeah, let's go back to talking about some of the facts about the Hyrax, right? So they grow up to be two feet in width and they weigh about 10 pounds. One Hebrew word for conies is the hiders, guys, the hiders, right? So because they make their, and they're named the hiders because they make their homes and hide in the rocks, right? That's so powerful, guys. You got to get that. And that's what I was going to say, too. Thanks for mentioning that. We got to be thick skinned in life. That's the application. This is why God said go to the conies. This is why God mentioned conies, rock badgers, hyraxes in the Bible. We have to be thick skinned in life. You can't be letting things affect you. Life is passing you by. So just being mad about something that happened 50 years ago, 80 years ago, and you're still mad about it is just pathetic. Because you're only on, on this earth for how long? And you're just going to be mad all your life? Like you're gonna be mad in glory too and in eternity. So if you ain't gonna be mad, <laughs> you guys get what I'm saying, man. We can't be thick skinned in life. We gotta let things go. We gotta be forgiving, like the Bible says. Just like the conies, man. Oh my gosh, like this. I'm not, I'm not even gonna spoil it, guys. Let's keep on going. Conies are a little, but they're wise. They're tiny, but they're talented, i.e., they're smart, right? But this is the good stuff, guys. I haven't even gotten to the good stuff. So if you like if you guys like this at all, it's about to get crazy. All right, so. Yeah, so conies, man, they live in colonies of 50 to 80, 50 to 80, so they're social creatures, and they stay close together because they're warming one another up, right? They're warming each other up. So here goes the life application, man. You may come to church cold, but you can leave on fire. 
right? So that's the life of vacation, man. So we got to spend time with each other as believers because our strengths help offset our weaknesses. We're stronger and better together. When we are weak, when some of us are weak, other people can, you know, help them up, help them and lift them up higher. You know what I'm saying? So like, yo, we can draw strength from one another. So we all are weak. Let's just get that out the way. Every one of us, we all, we're all weak and feeble folk, just like the Conies guys. So I'm going to wait to get to that. But yeah, I just want to spoil that. Another fact about the Conies is they blend in with where they live. Like if you look at these pictures that I've been showing you about Con of the Conies, they blend in with the rocks that they live at. So they blend in with the rocks. You see this? So guys, for us, do you blend in with the rock? See, I'm talking about Jesus the whole time. <laughs> I'm just going to spoil it. I'm talking about Jesus, right? So do you blend in with the rocks? And that's what the conies do. They blend in with the rocks, right? So the more time you spend with God, the more you will be like him. This is the application. Here goes some quotes. Your Christian life will go no further than your intake of the word of God. The only way you can be saturated with the thoughts of Christ is to saturate yourself with the book that is all about him. Last quote is, the more you go through the scriptures, the more you will get out of it. And here goes some Bible verses. John 15, 4 says, Jesus said, abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. So guys, imagine if the hierarchies didn't have the rocks. What would, what would happen to them? See, we learned in the scripture passage, I haven't talked about it yet, but the scripture passage talks about how the hierarchies find their protection in the rock right? <laughs> so without the rock, where would they be? They will be a dead folk. Like they don't stand a chance against the other animals. I just told you they can't outrun. They can't bite. They can't fight. They have no, you know, weapon, weaponry in their arsenal. So they can't do anything against the snake, against the lion, against the bear. They're done for. They're easy pickings, easy prey, but the rock changes the ball game. Oh boy, we have to tear this up, man. So Ephesians 5, 1 says, imitate God therefore in everything you do because you are are his children. So here goes a quote. We shouldn't act like children of this world. We should act like children of God, guys. So man, we should be blending in and being like Jesus to this world. We shouldn't be living like and being like and going to places and doing everything that the rest of the world does because we should enjoy being in the rock like the rock badger. So guys, we're about to tear this up, man. I want you guys to remember this. So here goes another fact about the rock badger you should know. They keep a lookout. So when one of them runs for cover, Everybody runs for cover. So all of them are making sure that no man is left behind. They warn others of the coming judgment and warn others of hell. That's the application, right? They warn others that they need Jesus. And Jesus is their true safety, their true strength, their true power, their true refuge. So run to him in times of danger. That is so powerful. This is the application, guys. Go to the rock badger. Go to the coney. Go to the high racks. This is what God is teaching us, guys. So, man. Here we go, man. Uh, another point about the Hyrax, man. They make particular sounds sounding to everyone, letting everyone know that this is their dwelling place, right? And they're proud of living on the rock, right? This is what the Hyrax does, the Coney does, you know? And something else you should know is we should be the same way. You know, just like the Coney wants to, they, they're proud of living on a rock. They're proud of being a child of God. They pro they're proud of having this dwelling place. Guys, don't you know God is your dwelling place? See, I'm not going to even get to that, those scripture verses yet. But guys, like, just a little application. There's one song we used to sing at my childhood church all the time was, said I wasn't going to tell nobody but I. That was a song. It's called Couldn't Tell Nobody. I should really put it in the description for this video. I'll try to do it. Um, but, yeah, that song, man, it touched me so much when I was a kid. And like, here goes some of the lyrics. It says, said I wasn't going to tell nobody, but I couldn't keep it to myself. Uh, and then the soprano split off, split off and say, said I wasn't going to tell nobody, but I couldn't keep it to myself. Thought about it, prayed about it. I'm going to tell somebody else. Right. And so let me go ahead and skip. So I'm in Psalms 32, verse seven, man, this is crazy, guys. Let's get to the good stuff. So in Psalms 32, verse seven, it says, thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. That is so crazy, guys. So is God your hiding place? Is God your dwelling place? Is God where you go to in times of trouble? Just like the Coney. The Coney 
fire stays in the rock. It doesn't move from the rock. <laughs> I'm not gonna spoil it. I want you guys to remember that point, though. I want to come back to it. Like I'm coming back to every point I've ever iterated in this video so far. So another thing we should say in this song was, you know, uh, the tenors. I used to sing that part. You know, I used to say, "You are the big man," but we were saying the whole time, "You ought to been there." You ought to been there. And then the altos were singing, save my soul, that's what he's done. Make me whole, that's what he's done. Turn me around, that's what he's done. Planted my feet on solid ground, that's what he's done. <laughs> that song was so dope. So guys, like the rock badgers plant their feet. They plant their feet on the rock. See, God made the rock badgers to where they stick on the rock like nobody else. Like they literally stick on rocks like spiders do on walls. Actually, even more so. Like they just just like glue on their hands sticking on the rock. And I don't think they can stick on anything like they can on the rock. You know what you guys see what I'm saying? Like they're planted and they don't move when they're on the rock. And then also they climb up 90 degree, degree slopes. That, this is their ability that they have over all the rest of the animals. Like this is their strength. Like they can climb up 90 degree slopes. And they can climb up to high places where other animals can't go to because the altitude, they can't stay in that altitude. So the conies, they're in the rocks. They're in higher elevation places, 90 degree slopes where other animals can't climb. They stick and plant themselves on the rock. Do you do the same thing with Jesus? Do you plant yourself on the rock to where your enemies can't get to you? You guys see what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> So, man, guys, they're stuck on a rock, planted on the rock, stuck to God's house, man. So, man, I'm going to come back to that in a minute. But, yeah, let me go ahead and read Psalms uh, 92, verse 12 through 15. It says, the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. So you'll flourish like a palm tree. Palm trees last a long time. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the course of our God. So guys, when you're planted on the rock, when you're planted on where Jesus is, if your foundation is Jesus, I'm going to spoil some of it, then you will flourish in the house of where God is, in the house of the Lord, guys. So that shall bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing to show that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there's no unrighteousness in him. So guys, man, this remind me of the eagle, like one of the facts about the conies going up 90 degree uh, slopes where all the rocks are. Guys, this is powerful. So the eagle, I'm gonna share my screen. I want you guys to see this. So one of the posts that really touched me on social media, I've never posted it because all of the photos kind of suck, but um, I wanna post it because the story's good. Maybe I should just make a photo out of it like this. But anyways, guys, one thing about the eagle is it doesn't, when it, when it's hungry, and it's looking for food. It, it, I think it looks for food anywhere, any animal, any prey, easy, easy, any easy picking, right? And whenever they looking for food, that's a snake. Like they're not gonna fight the snake on the ground because if they fight the snake on the ground, this is where the snake is powerful and deadly. So they're not gonna fight the snake in its arena, where it has all, where it has the its comfort zone, right? Instead, the eagle changes the game and puts the snake in a situation where the eagle is in his comfort zone, where his strength lies and where he's more powerful and the snake is helpless, right? So when eagles attack snakes, they always take them up to the sky, take them up higher, right? Because when the, when the eagle takes the snake up higher, the snake becomes useless because it's not on the ground, it becomes weak, it becomes vulnerable, it, be, it becomes, you know, easy pickings. So it has no stamina. Also, it can't breathe in higher altitudes like the like the eagle. So the eagle is going to just have its way with the snake, guys. So, like, yeah, that's how we got to do as Christians. So, like, the conies with the slope, guys, the 90-degree slope, their enemies can't get up the slope. It The more, the higher they go on the slope on the, on the rock, the further their enemies are from them. Matter of fact, they can see where their enemies are and know not to go nowhere near them, right? This is how the life is for the conies, guys. So, guys, when you're praying to the Lord and you take your fight to him spiritually, so instead of fighting flesh for flesh, instead of fighting your battles with your fist and with your mouth, 
through fleshly means, you know, trying to win battles yourself. Go to God in prayer. Go to the spiritual realm, realm and let God take over your battles. You see, guys, see what I'm saying? This is the application. Go to the conies. You remember how in the Bible, in the book of Proverbs, chapter six, I think, it says, go to the ant. Go to the conies. Go to the rock badgers. Go to the hyraxes. Guys, animals are so powerful. God is speaking through all things in creation. You guys see what I'm saying? So let's keep on going, man. So another thing that hyraxes do is they start their day basking in the sun, lying on the rock and not moving. So they start their day charging themselves up and they start their day fully charged and being renewed in strength, guys. So guys, are you right now in this moment, are you charged up? Are you fully charged up every single day as a child of God? You got to make sure you're fully charged up. You're ready to go. You are renewed in strength. You guys get what I'm saying? Because you got to be ready to fight every single day. And that's what the Coney does, the rock badger, every single day, bask in the sun. Do you bask in the sun? In Jesus, guys. Jesus is the sun. I ain't talking about the sun. I'm talking about the sun of God. Like, come on, guys. <laughs> this is so crazy, man. You guys see it? So you cannot start your day without fellowshipping with the rock. The rock is Jesus, just like the Coney, guys. So, man, so Isaiah 40, verse 31, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. So, man, something you should know about Jesus is he charged himself up daily. You guys get what I'm saying? More than the evening, he renewed his strength. More than the evening. So there's so many Bible verses. I'm not going to read it, but you'll see, like, Jesus... He will always, every time when there was a crowd and he preached, he would go away alone to pray. Go alone to be by himself, to just to be with the Lord so he can renew his strength. He did it in the garden of Gethsemane. He did it day and night, man. He withdrew from everybody and went to the wilderness to pray. Do you do the same thing? Do you renew your strength? Are you, are you, uh, what's the word I, I was saying? Are you charging yourself up? What can charge you up better than Jesus? What can charge you up better than the Lord? Man, I pray this message is charging you up right now. Just like for the conies, man. This is how we're supposed to be doing, man. So this is the better stuff. Man. I probably should start off with this with the conies because it's like my videos get better as time goes by. But at the beginning of my videos, they suck balls. But anyways, let's keep on going. So like, here goes another fact about the coney. Every single day, guys, every single day, the Coney's running for their lives. Oh, somebody comment. Oh, my gosh. Thank you, man. I got it for the first fruit this morning. I needed this. Yeah, you're welcome. Y'all follow uh, number one, Sexy Carter. Thank you so much. We got to DM each other. Thank you for being a blessing and for watching, especially for this long. All right, so, guys, like, uh, yeah. So, one thing you should know about the Coney's is every single day they're running for their lives. <laughs> every single day they end up, <laughs> every single day they could end up being on a, another animal's dinner plate right? Like they're easy pickings for everybody, for every animal. So, <laughs> so they're living their life, run away from the enemy every single moment, every single day, guys. You guys get that? So guys, don't that sound like Christians? Satan, that's a scripture verse. Let me read it, just in case you didn't know. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8, be alert and be sober-minded. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. This is Satan's job. This is the enemies of God's job. These are demons' jobs to make life hell for you. Same thing happens for the conies. Animals. Do animals have an easy life? The conies, out of all animals, don't have an easy life. Everybody wants to eat the coney and take advantage of the coney. It's an easy meal. But what does God does? He protects them in the rock. All right? So I'm not going to spoil it in. So... Yeah. All right. So we got to be vigilant vil uh, and be alert and sober minded, just like the Coney, because people are looking to attack us as well. People are looking to hurt us as well. People, Satan is looking to steal, kill, and destroy everything God is doing in your life right now, just so you can lose hope in God, just so you can stop serving God. He's looking to distract you, to break you, to steal everything good that God is doing in your life right now, just so you can turn away from him. Just so you don't save any more souls, just so people don't get to know the Lord, so everybody can burn in hell. That's what Satan wants. But boy, God provides another way. All right, so let's get to the next uh, fact about um, 
Coney, so when eagles are flying down, so this is so powerful, guys. When eagles are flying down, they tend to go up to the sun first. So, so they go over the sun to where their their prey is looking into the sun, and they're thinking, oh, well, the eagle is not going to hurt me. It's, you know, but they can't look into the sun, right? So the eagle goes underneath the sun as soon as it's over the sun to hide on, like, the very bottom of the sun. Like, so their, their wings are, like, underneath the sun, right? All right, so I want you guys to picture that. So they hide underneath the sun, so the sun is still blinding their prey. So they move quick enough to where the their prey thinks that this it's just the sun. Like, it was just like a, a blip in the sun, right? And then they scoop down, and they take their prey, and they eat them. Like, <laughs> so this is how they get their food, man. So Hyraxes, man, God gave Hyraxes two eyelids, guys. He gave them two eyelids. So we got one eyelid, like right here. This is an eyelid, right? So the conies have two eyelids, guys. And one eyelid is to block the sun from blinding them, right? And God gave the conies two eyelids so that when the eagle, just, just, just an example, when the eagle does that little thing in the sun and hides underneath the sun, trying to be deceiving and thinking that the animal's just looking into the sun, it scoops down and takes the prey. No, it can't fool the coney. It can't fool the hyrax. The hyrax sees what the eagle is doing. It knows what the eagle's doing. And it flees and goes to its refuge, its strong tower, the rocks. Man, guys, you see what I'm saying? This is so powerful, right? You guys see it? Man, so this is a scripture verse for believers, man. King James Version read in, first, uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, lest Satan should get an advantage of us for we are not ignorant of his schemes. So we can't be ignorant of Satan's schemes. He's looking to devour you, to hurt you. He can't fool us. He can't dupe us. He can't outsmart us. We see what he's doing. We know the ways of this world is corrupt. Every way is corrupt in this world. We know they're not glorifying God. And we're not going to be fooled by what they're trying to sell us. You know, guys, you guys know what I'm saying? That's what the Coney does, guys. This is so crazy. Rock badgers. Something else you should know about rock badgers, Coney's, uh, Hyraxes. These animals, man, they're very independent. So as soon as a rock badger gives birth, the child only stays with them for an hour. So the child only stays with the mother for an hour. And after an hour, the baby coney already knows how to roam around the rocks. They already know how to go around the rock, guys. So here goes the scripture verse, guys. Deuteronomy 6, verse 6 through 7. It says, these commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts and press them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, and when you lie down, and when you get up. So how many of your children actually have a relationship with Christ? For themselves, guys. So how many children, how many of your children actually lean on Christ, depend on Jesus to get to heaven, and they don't base their religion, their hope of getting into heaven on your faith? Because I used to do that as a kid. As a kid, I was, I'm a preacher's kid. My dad's a pastor. My dad's dad was a pastor. My mom's dad's a pastor. All my mom's siblings are pastors just about. So I used to always associate myself with them. And it because they're saved, because they serve the Lord, I, I'm good for the promised land. That's not how God works. God's going to judge you based on what you've done. God's going to judge you on you. You're going to stand on the judgment seat alone. And only thing that's going to matter is your relationship with Jesus, not your dad's relationship, not your mom's relationship, not your husband's relationship, not your wife's relationship. All that matters is your relationship. Do you know Christ for yourself? And these rock badgers, they know the rock for themselves, guys. Whoa, we're trying to stop, guys. We're getting good. It's getting crazy. So baby conies, they have their own relationship with the rocks. They know how to depend on, rely on, and they know how to, that they know that their refuge, their protection, their safety, their hope. This strong tower is in the rocks. Like, they don't go outside the rock, guys. I haven't even talked about that yet. Yeah, guys, all this is coming together like crazy. I know you guys see it because you guys have been on the whole the video the whole time. So thank you so much. So let's get to it, man. Like, And somebody just said train up a child. Yes, that's the whole point. These conies train up the child in the way that they should go. Did you guys hear what I said? These baby conies are with their mother for an hour. An hour. They're... The baby, the baby, the mama baby, Coney, you guys know what I'm saying? The mama of the rock badger, like, they don't stay with the baby. Like, the baby knows how to live, right? Do you know how to live for the Lord? Do you know the Lord for yourself? Do you know how to roam around his rock? You know, 
his foundation, his word for yourself. Man, come on, boy. We're preaching now. So another scripture verse is somebody said, train up a child the way that they should go. And when he is old, he, he will not depart from it. So that's Proverbs 22, 6. Another scripture verse, guys. Keep in mind, Isaiah chapter 8, verse 18. Here I am and the children the Lord has given me. We are signs and symbols in Israel for the Lord Almighty who dwells on Mount Zion. So guys, you see that guys, the children that God has given me and, and me, we're all symbols of God's goodness. And that's the conies guys. The conies stay on the rock and they're protected. And guys, I'm gonna spoil it. Hunters used to hunt after conies and rock badgers, hyraxes. They just chase this animal down and kill it and eat it. But I guess they eat it, I don't know. But now they stopped hunting these animals that we're talking about. They stopped hunting them because they couldn't get to them when they were in the rock, when they got in the cracks. Nobody can get to these animals when they're in the rocks and in the cracks. So I'm not going to spoil what I'm about to say later on. But guys, that's the coney. That's the coney. All right. So, all right. So, guys, just like the coney, this is the application, guys. You ready? This is the life application. This is why God put the rock badger, the hyraxes, the conies in the Bible, guys. All right. So, we are all small in strength, right? We're small in size. We're help. We are all helpless and hopeless, you know, with without God as a strength. We are nothing without God, right? We need the rock, just like the coney, right? We're incapable of facing all of life's challenges and temptations in our own strength and in our own power. And so is the coney, man. The coney has to rely on the rock, guys. So, man, here goes another thing. Uh, let's see if I should read it. Yeah, guys, so I have an Instagram post that I posted. Wow, I'm still sharing my screen. Unbelievable. Yeah, I have an Instagram post that I posted a while ago on November 7, 2021. And this is the post. It's just the quote says, if Jesus is all you have, then you have all you need. You guys see that? So this guy, this guy asked this guy a question. It says, he said, uh, is that all you need? And this guy who asked that question, it says, <laughs> he has all these boxes that says bit stuff. New car, shiny things, exotic holidays, new clothes. So this guy, all his hope, all his being, everything that that he has is based on material things. So all his being, all his identity, his foundation, who he defines himself as is all these things, right? And then there's another person who just has a box that says Jesus on it. So if Jesus is all you have, you have all you need. Guys, these conies, these rock badgers, the whole point of what we're talking about is all they have is the rock. They have nothing else. Like, all they have to, to lean on is the rock. I just told you guys, they they suck. Like, out of all the animals in all the kingdom, they're slow. They can't do anything against a animal, another animal when they're attacking them. Like, there's just no hope for them, right? And so, guys, you don't need anything but the Lord. This is a whole application of rock badgers and conies. You don't need anything but the Lord. Jesus is enough, right? The rock is enough. <laughs> all the rock badgers have are the rocks. So if God is all you have, you have all you need. This is the application of the rock badgers, man. So even though you lost your job, that's okay. That job doesn't define you. Even though you lost your spouse, your spouse which sucks through death, that sucks so bad. I pray that don't happen to me or anybody, honestly. But um, that's my worst nightmare, actually, guys. But, guys, that's not your identity. Jesus is your identity. You, you know, death of a child, you know, not having a church home, not finding people who can uh, you can fellowship with, you know, in the church setting, in your local area, you know, lack of finances. I keep on going, guys. Like, you know, having no means to pay bills. Like, you know, our circumstances sometimes may not be in our favor. Heck, they may never be in our favor, right? But is Jesus enough for you? And the, these conies teach us that the rock is enough, right? So again, we're turning this up, guys. You see it? You see where we're going? So the storms of life, man, nobody's immune to storms and trials of life, man. They're coming for everybody. Either in a storm, either just came out of one, or you're about to be in one, right? A storm tests your foundation to see if it is frail, fragile, feeble, <laughs> faulty, or fragmented.
This is why trials come. They also come to grow you in the faith, to grow you spiritually, to draw you closer to the Lord. This conies, life's hard for them. Is life hard for you? You're not alone. You know what I mean? Animals, life sucks for. And we're talking about conies and rock badgers. Do you have life? Is your life awful awfuler than them? I know that's not a word. But <laughs> so, guys, man, something you should know about rock badgers as well. Conies, uh, this, this animal, right? They're really good at being re resourceful. Are you good at being resource resourceful? Let me stop sharing my screen. All right, y'all got to see my face on YouTube and Facebook. We got to stop doing that. Well, should, this is why I should never share my, share my screen. All right, but anyways, what was I talking about? Yeah, they're good at being resource, research, resourceful. Goodness gracious. And they, mo they make the most of what with what they have. So do you do your very best with what you with, with what you have? And if you don't, you know, those who have not, <laughs> those who have little, even what little they have will be taken from them. Because God only, he's only really going to give more to people who are faithful with the little that they have. Right. So if you're not being faithful with the little that you have, Jesus said, you won't be faithful with much. So why would I give you more? Right. So look at the conies. They're faithful with little, the little, the little bit of strength that they have, the little bit of knowledge that they have, the little bit of wisdom that they have. They go far in life. Guys, this is so crazy, man. You guys see what I'm saying? So, man, let's talk about going to the rock. Right. So. This is powerful, guys. All this is coming together. I already read Psalms 32, 7, but Psalms 61, 2, um, 4 says this. From the ends of the earth, I call to you. I call as my heart grows faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the foe. I long to dwell in your tent forever and take refuge in the shelter of your wings. Guys, this is what we need to do, right? <laughs> Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. The conies go to a rock that's higher than any other animal, right? Except for the eagle, probably. <laughs> so, like, they're on a rock that's higher, right? So do you have a higher perspective on life, on what's going on in life? Do you have God perspective on life? Because we know, like, in the book of Isaiah, it says that God's ways are not our ways. His his thoughts are higher than our thoughts, right? So we got to come up higher. What God is doing in our life sometimes doesn't make sense. It seems like it was a bad choice to, to do it in the way that he did it. But God's plan is perfect. Perfect, right? So when you can see uh, life from the perspective that he has, it makes everything make sense, right? So lead me to the rock that is higher than I. This is what the Coney does. They go to the rock that's higher than themselves, man. They make their refuge in the strong tower in the Lord. They dwell in a tent forever. They stay there. They don't move. I haven't even talked about that yet, guys, but I'm getting to it. And they take refuge and shelter in the wings of the rock. This is what we should do, guys. Who's the rock? Who's the rock? Right? Jesus, guys. I haven't even talked about it yet. So the rocks and hills, they live in the uh, honey badge. I mean, <laughs> rock badgers, conies. That animal, right? Hyraxes. They live in the rocks. They live in the mountains. Their dwelling place slash home is in the rocks. So they know how to take advantage of a good thing. Remember I said they're being resourceful? This is how they're being resourceful, guys. You know, this is this is how we need to position ourselves in life. So if there's anything you need to take away from conies when the Bible talks about it in Proverbs chapter 30, verse 26, the conies are but a feeble folk, yet they make their houses in the rocks. Guys, from a Coney's perspective, this is in the Bible for this reason, so we can learn how to position ourselves in life. God is trying to teach us how Christians, how believers, how, how his children should position themselves in life. You thought we talked about it, but there's so much more to talk about, right? It's way too much more. You know what? I'm going to stop the video, and I'm going to do the next part, or maybe I should keep on going. I don't know. Let's just keep on going. I mean, because this video is going to take... Okay, I got a little bit longer. Let's just finish it out. So, I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to stop it. All right, yeah, let's just stop. Let's let's do it over. All right, so, guys, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I pray that you guys enjoyed the first part of this video, talking about rock badgers, talking about um, conies, um, hyraxes, this animal in the Bible, guys. So, if you want to see more videos like this, go to my YouTube channel, Upload Past Crossroads. Subscribe. Turn on post notifications, like, share, comment. I need your help to grow my ministries. If you don't like, you don't share, you don't comment, 
on these videos, nobody's going to be blessed. Nobody will see it. Social media will not promote these videos. All right, guys. So anyways, um, yeah, these are my YouTube channels. Uh, Upload Past Crossroads is my YouTube and podcast. So go to that. Facebook, LinkedIn is Sean Christopher Jenkins. Be friend me on there. I want to support your pages as well. Twitter, Snap, Instagram, TikTok is Trouble Don't Last. And Instagram is my underscore daily underscore Bible. And tr- my Tumblr page is Trouble Don't Last number one. And yeah, man, somebody just asked. Uh, y'all follow Trad uh period truther uh they asked why am i stopping yeah because the video's already at 50 minutes i'm trying to keep my videos shorter so i'm doing a part two i'm going live right after this all right so <laughs> all right so i'm doing a part two for this just can't, can't continue what i just talked about so just give me i'm just gonna turn off this video for now but yeah guys thanks for tuning in thanks for all your support you want me to do any videos for you you got any questions dm me i'll do my earnest to uh answer your questions and do videos on them as well. So we all learn and grow in the faith. And I hope you guys like my, uh, my Mr. Rogers outfit. You guys know who Mr. Rogers is. You know, it's a, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Hey boys and girls. <laughs> yeah, that's my guy. So, all right guys. So I'll talk to you guys later. And yeah, it's up, uplift, uh, past crossroads. So uplift and then past, you know, passing somebody by, but with a T not, not pass, like hallway pass, not that. It's past, like past, present, future. And then Crossroads, uh, you know, like the song Crossroads, meet me at the cross, 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 meet me. we get something, that song. <laughs> I don't know the words. I'm going to miss everybody. Hmm. That song, living in the hateful world, sitting me straight. Oh, by Bones and Harmony, yeah. <laughs> I just sing it to, to you know, figure out what the words are. I'll butcher every song ever, unless I look up the lyrics. But anyways, guys, I'll talk to you guys in a minute. I'm going live again. So just give me one second. All right. So I'll talk to you guys in a minute. All right. Peace out.